Hello, my name is Wade Nimmer, and this is Rotary and Serving Our Community. One of the areas that Rotary gets very involved in is working with poverty, trying to uh, elevate and lift those lives that are having some problems and getting them elevated above the current conditions they're at. One of the ways we do this is through education, and one of the educational components is called STEPS. And with us today, we have with us the chair of STEPS this year, Max Copenhagen. Max, welcome. Hi, Wade. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So, uh, Max, you've been here before, but go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. I have. Uh, I uh, began in Rotary about 12 years ago at, uh, in another district in the Inland Empire, and I just uh, really enjoyed that club. Um, we went on a, a brief weekend trip to Mexico and did a project down there. We built a chicken coop for an orphanage, and it was an inspiring and I was sort of engaged ever since. Professionally, what do you do? Or what did you do? I'm a professional forester. I worked okay. for the US Forest Service uh, in San Bernardino for quite a while. And I retired in 2008. 2008. Great. Now, tell us a little bit about your involvement with uh, the Poverty Conference, STEPS. Well, there have been uh, at least four of these uh, poverty conferences. We call it STEPS, which is STEPS toward eliminating poverty sustainably. So we call it STEPS, and we do it every two years. Um, I went to one about um, six, six years ago. It's, it's bopped around different places in the counties. Uh, recently, it's been at California Lutheran University. They have a beautiful facility down there that they let us use. Uh, so I, I, I've, been I've been interested in international projects for quite a long time. And this is a good way to connect with people who are doing these projects and learning how to do projects. Um, and we also, uh, the last two years at least, we've been emphasizing local projects uh, for alleviating poverty and doing the other uh, focus programs that Rotary is involved in. Now, I believe the very first one was in um, Tijuana, Mexico. Is that correct? Or Actually, that's before my time. Okay. But okay. I believe uh, I think that was the governor, governor at the Jay time. Lindsay was instrumental. In I believe so. Time. And then it was moved up here. Right, right. So I think at one time the San Diego district was involved in it, but now we have our own steps here in Ventura County uh, for the four or five counties of Rotary. Right. Now, um, the symposium, STEP symposium, is actually focusing on all poverty, so there's all different areas of that specific. When I say that or ask that, which area did you get involved with in the poverty efforts, first of all? Was it just overall or international? Well, right now, well, as, as I said, my first program was this chicken coop in, in Ensenada, right. uh, which was uh, to help the orphans down there, um, you know, focusing on youth, uh, which is one of the uh, Rotary uh, focus areas is maternal health and youth. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we, you know, one of the best things we do with STEPS is we, we help uh, educate Rotarians and other nonprofit interested uh, people to come to, to STEPS in, in new issues and share projects and success stories about successful projects and then we have a, a way of uh, helping people network and make contacts uh, with the people, the who that they need in order to make their projects successful. I think uh, one of the things we, we do pretty well that, that we're emphasizing is community development, which is one of the six focus areas. Um, one of the breakout groups at STEPS will be about a successful project in Bosnia where one of our Rotarians uh, got a grant from uh, the International Foundation, uh, Rotor the Foundation, the, the Rotary Foundation, mm -hmm. and helped uh, women over there, mostly widows, because of the war they had, and they were looking for economic opportunity, and she helped them deve develop a tomato canning industry. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think it's sun-dried tomatoes. But economic development, community development, is one of the most successful ways to help people come out of poverty. True. Very true. Um, for yourself, my question is this. Uh, because of the poverty efforts and things that we do for Rotarians, as Rotarians, for humanitarian purposes, 
Did you ever have that rotary moment that actually came out of one of these projects? Well, I've had a couple of rotary moments, and I think uh, <clears throat> one, one was the chicken coop. I was amazed yeah. how much Rotarians can get done in one day if they really put their mind to it. And then I was involved in a project that brought eyeglasses to uh, hill tribe villagers in northern Thailand. And I saw this project uh, at a booth at one of our international conventions, actually the one that was in Los Angeles, I think in 2008. And I, I struck up a conversation um, with these guys that were promoting this type of project. I got a district grant and we bought about $6,000 worth of eyeglasses. They're actually kits where you can manufacture them. Um, and I, I tried putting them together myself. In about half an hour, you can build a nice little set of glasses. And we sent these to Thailand. They worked with their Rotaract Club and a, an ongoing medical clinic uh, RV van that they had that went out to these villages. And within a year, we had distributed these 6,000 pairs of glasses. Wow. So I thought it was fantastic. Okay. It, was, it gave me a good feeling that I had actually helped accomplish something. <laughs> Great. So uh, the steps uh, symposium, the, uh, the upcoming uh, steps. In the past, there's been a lot of introduction to poverty and the awareness of that. Does the steps now also incorporate solutions? There are solutions in the sense that we're sharing or providing the, the framework and the opportunity to, to share successes in how things get done. Um, we will have breakout sessions and we'll have exhibitors. And this year we're thinking of having like an open mic where people who want to talk about their project or ask for help on a project they're planning can just take the mic for a couple of minutes and ask the audience uh, to get engaged in that, in that project. So there's no simple solution uh, for, for a project. Um, there's some things that we know failed. Uh, a lot of projects have failed because they didn't have the community support. They didn't take the time to do a needs assessment or you know, somehow they left that, let's say, village or that place where the project was and there was no one, no one who really had ownership in the success of that project. It was kind of top down. So it's important that they be uh, grassroots and from the, from the people up. And that's what, why we do a, a needs assessment. It's also important that they be sustainable. And, and sustainability is kind of a buzzword, but it's really important that, that we think about what will make a project sustainable, feasible, survivable, where it'll last long enough to, to be worthwhile. Right, so this is actually part of the guidelines and goals of the Rotary Foundation overall. For sure. Okay, In fact, great. for the UN too, I think. There's sure. a UN guide to sustainability. Right, right. You brought, with, uh, you brought some pictures along, so if you want, we could jump into those uh, photos that you brought. Sure. First one, um, I believe, is your flyer. Is that a save the date you have there? Well, it's sort of a business card. Okay. Uh, and I have a couple here for you if you'd like, a, <laughs> like some more. I'd love to take those, uh, thank it's, you. It's to save the date. Uh, okay. So our next steps will be coming up in January at Cal Lutheran University. Is it all day or half day events? I'd say it's all day. Pretty it's much all day. basically nine to three or four in okay. the afternoon, okay. uh, starting with a couple of really good keynote speakers. Um, and I could talk more about those, um, which is that we, we have uh, a guy coming um, let's see, I should have his name handy, but I think it's <laughs> a combi. Okay. Um, and he's a, he's a professor from the Midwest who's, he's from East Africa, and he's an expert in rural development. Uh, he grew up on a tea plantation, I think, in Kenya. And, and he'll be speaking, talking about poverty in general. He is involved in the video, which is called Poverty Incorporated. And that's available, actually I got it from Netflix. And it's a, it's a wonderful perspective on the status of anti-poverty efforts to date okay. with a lot of surprises in it. Okay. So he'll be one keynote speaker. Okay. The other keynote speaker will be Opal Singleton who's uh, involved in the um, human trafficking uh, issue. She's from Riverside, and she's just a, an authority. She's written a book, and, and she'll 
she'll present about that issue. Got it. So you'll have a general session in the morning and breakouts possibly in the afternoon? Is exactly. Okay. Um, okay. Actually, we'll have a keynote in the morning, then we'll have a breakout, and then lunch, and then a keynote, oh, okay. and another breakout. And all this time, there'll be uh, exhibits going on. Right. And, and one of the really interesting exhibits is we've arranged to have a, it's not a trailer, but it's a, it's a mobile exhibit called Eye Empathy where by having, when someone walks through it with a guide, it, it helps them empathize with victims of human trafficking, mm -hmm. which is also a local issue. You know, that, that's one that has you know, worldwide ramifications. True, very true. Well, thank you. Uh, next picture you have shows a little girl here, it looks like, with a book. Yeah, this, this and the next picture also, if we want to move to that, uh, the little girl has a, has a book. And, and the next picture is of a library being built actually in a uh, mountain town in Panama. And this project happened because um, a librarian in, in this area, either Carpinteria or Santa Barbara, Carpinteria. actually knew someone <laughs> retired, in, some librarians retired in this village in Panama. They applied for a Rotary Grant um, and it's a matching grant, 50-50, right. uh, and they bought these books and the bookshelves and installed this library as, a, as the first lending library in this town. Oh, wow. So it's just an example of a small, you know, maybe four or $5,000 to do a, a really meaningful project. Great. And your next picture? The, ne the next picture shows a, it's a drinking water project. Uh, there's a a plant here that'll show up on one of, oh, I guess we're out of, oh, that, okay, I see it now. Um, all right, this is sort of the, the deployment end of the eyeglasses project that I was involved oh, okay. in. We put most of, sent most of the eyeglass kits to northern Thailand, but we sent some of them, I think we sent about a thousand pair of glasses to Bangladesh, uh, because I had met uh, someone from Bangladesh, and it's really important. I think part of the sustainability and the feasibility of these projects that we do is we know a Rotary Club right. in the country where we do it. So we have that trust relationship and confidence that, that it'll be done uh, in a fair and, and, and honest way, right. frankly. Right. But uh, this is the, uh, shows the kits in Bangladesh. In your next picture, you have uh Actually, it's a drinking water project then. It is. Uh, there was a plant that was put in at a school, and apparently, I've not been to this project, but apparently a line of uh, faucets here so the kids can get a drink of water and uh, probably engage in some hygiene and mm -hmm. uh, washing their hands, uh, things like that. True. It usually um, comes with an educational component for health and it, hygiene. It does. And I, I'm yeah. aware that there's a, there was a project funded by the Rotary Club of Santa Barbara, one of the Rotary Clubs here in Thailand, uh, where they built a huge water tank and a filter system, and that was at a school, but when the school wasn't in session, in the off hours, the villagers were correct. encouraged to come in and get the water from the same source. That, that is correct. Um, usually the reason for that is the uh, schools are secured. People yeah. take good care of the schools. Yeah. Next picture you have. It's one of the other upcoming projects are, are showing uh, <clears throat> youth who are vulnerable to being exploited, um, either kidnapped or conned into thinking somebody's helping them, but actually they're putting them in a very uh, bad situation. And um, it's, it's unfortunate, but there is kidnapping and exploitation of teenagers who uh, become trafficked and it's very hard for them to get out of it. Um, so it, this is something we want to educate the public in and, and provide some tools for, for how Rotarians and others can help uh, fight um, human trafficking. Because this is uh, worldwide, but um, surprisingly and shockingly, it actually occurs locally also. It is. The, the UN estimates that 12 million people are actually trafficked are in bondage now in some way where they can't escape, they, they don't have control over their situation, and many of those are children. Uh, some of it's sexual trafficking, but it's also labor, you know, just 
forcing someone to do work and you know, not allowing them uh, contact with the rest of the world. Okay. So that, this is something that we're going to bring as, a, as an issue, just to educate Rotarians and, and help them learn some tools. Uh, and, and frankly, I, I am not an expert on this. I learned about this at the Peace Conference back in January that was in Ontario, and it really opened my eyes. I, I heard Opal Singleton speak, and it just I thought, well, this is something we can get involved in. This is something where Rotarians can help. And one thing we can do is just keep our eyes open. You know, be aware of what's happening at truck stops and gas stations and off the side of the road. And if something looks strange, call 911. And there's some other hotlines. So it's, it can be as simple as that or, or learning these techniques. Uh, there's another um, breakout session that we're going to have at STEPS. It will, will be a, a module for teaching teachers in how to present the subject to a classroom to um, make the children, make the, the youth, the students less vulnerable to being exploited and, and getting, getting uh, diverted or taken down this road in the first place. So it's kind of a teach the teacher situation okay. that's something we could bring to the school system. Kind of a proactive uh, approach to uh, an action plan. Right. That's great. Yeah, it'll, it'll be helpful. So yeah. there's not a lot we can do directly, but we can do these things indirectly in terms of education and awareness that will do some good. Okay. One of the other, well, this is the picture of the, the uh, filtration plant mm -hmm. uh, where the kids were lined up at the, uh, at the faucets. Okay, the continuation um, of the water continuation project. Continuation of the okay. water project. Okay. Um, so poverty basically is addressed in all six of the areas of focus that Rody Foundation looks we at. We try to. We, we want to try to focus on all six, and then the six are all interrelated. Yeah. Because, sure. like, the eyeglasses, you could say it's for literacy, but it's also so that uh, someone with glasses would be able to do sewing and maybe sure. open a business. Right. So it has to do with economic and community development also. Okay. So they are, they're all related, the health, um, the peace, you know, poverty is one reason for conflict in the world and wars, so they are related. Okay, very good. So there's a well that someone has put in, uh, and I believe they did a community needs assessment on this one. <laughs> Definitely but, so. <laughs> uh, it can be a simple thing if it's valued and protected. The next slide is the water filtration plant uh, mm -hmm. that was at the school uh, where we saw the picture of the kids in line. And the next picture is, I guess I could say, some of my happy customers <laughs> who received glasses in Bangladesh. The, the little tag, this little white paper tag, like a, a mailing address on the glasses uh, they just haven't removed that yet, but once they get tested, they get a simple, um, a simple, it's like a ping pong table, you, ping pong paddle you hold out at arm's length, and if you can read a, a hand going up or down, you know, you, then, then they can calibrate what diopter your glasses should be, then they, they give them the pre-selected uh, pre-made glasses. And they simply haven't taken the tag off yet, but <laughs> okay. uh, they're very proud of their new glasses. Great. <laughs> so these are the projects we've done. The next slide is of wheelchairs. Um, and of course, you probably had programs about the polio campaign, uh, but there's also, there's a lot of people uh, in wheelchairs around the world, some that don't have, shall we say, respectable wheelchairs. They're just, you know, contraptions they put together. So we do provide wheelchairs, and, and this is one of the types of projects that, that we do that we'll be talking about. Great. We had 25 exhibitors uh, when we did steps two years ago, and they'll be around the room, and they'll have uh, uh, someone there to explain it, to advocate for it, uh, where one can walk in and out. and. Uh, I guess you asked me what my goal was for steps, and one is that the exhibits there would be like the House of Friendship that we have right. at the Rotary Conventions, where Very there'll good. be a room of hundreds of exhibitors, and it's so exciting to go through there because you can just 
you know, talk for a few minutes or, or half an hour if you want to really learn about what someone is doing with their particular project. So we encourage exhibitors from uh, other nonprofits as well. Okay. Uh, not only what a Rotary Club is doing, but uh, what, what other nonprofits are doing in the partners, field. Partners, potential partners. Absolutely, yeah. and that's what it's about. It's exactly. about learning about project successes and making connections with potential partners right. who want to do your project or might have a project that a, that a novice club would want to get involved in. So it's just, like I hear that quite a few clubs, maybe a third of, of our clubs aren't involved in an international project. And this is a way to meet somebody to, to get on board with something that's already happening and, and get enthusiastic about a project. Great. So there's another picture of one of my, one of our happy customers. Uh, this is a lady down in Mexico, down in Morelia, who we fitted with glasses. Um, That's great. And I think we can skip on to the second picture, um, who is one of our speakers. And this is Canote, Dr. Canote. He's a uh, professor of business management uh, in the Midwest, and he'll be speaking about uh, poverty in general and uh, his experience with the, the video Poverty Incorporated, which is quite enlightening. And our second speaker is, as I said, Opal uh, Singleton from Riverside. And she'll be speaking on? She'll be speaking on human trafficking, human trafficking. Uh, you know, the, all the issues uh, and, you know, how to prevent it, uh, how to help people that have experienced it, what to do. Uh, one of the other things that Rotary can get involved in, it's the housing angle. And, and there are other nonprofits doing this, uh, I know, in Ventura County. But once someone is uh, essentially uh, rescued from an from a human trafficking situation, what do they do? They may not have many life skills, so they need a place to live while they get themselves on their feet. So providing housing is something that, okay. that we can help with also. Good, good. And then uh, your last picture here shows a... Uh, That's the starfish, and I actually have one here on my lapel. Uh, this is the starfish uh, emblem. And we use the starfish uh, as a... Uh, sort of a logo or a graphic for steps, um, because there's this wonderful story, and I believe it's Hawaiian. Uh, a man is walking down a beach, and he sees somebody picking up starfish that have floated. There's hundreds of starfish that have drifted onto the, onto the beach for some reason, and this, this person is picking up the starfish and throwing them out into the ocean. So the man goes up to the, the other person and says, well, it looks like a lot of starfish, you know, I don't think you're doing much good, you know, there's so many, you know, uh, how could it possibly be meaningful uh, what you're doing? And the kid, uh, he picks one up, throws it out and says, it, it means something to that one. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So it's, it's, a, it's a one by one sort of effort. It's an individual effort. There's no one solution, um, no one size fits all. But with all these little projects that Rotary is able to do, uh, both here and all over the world, uh, we do make a difference. And, and that's part of our motto also, our, 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 our motto for this year, which is uh, doing good in the world. True. That is true. So the, um, the STEPS conference that we have coming up now is going to focus, it sounds like, quite a bit on not only that, but it sounds like it's going to be very interactive. The plans are probably to get the individual Terrans or anybody actually that's involved to be able to try and pick something that they could actually make a difference doing. That's the goal, is that everyone who comes will leave with the names of people that want to work with them. And if they don't have a project in mind, they'll have ideas where they can go back to their Rotary Club and plan a project, uh, seek funding, and put a project together that they can go out and do. Great. So it's about doing projects and uh, learning what's important, who
who to talk to, how to get funds to do that, and, and putting good ideas to use. It seems like one of the large challenges that most Rotary Clubs face is trying to identify a specific project and, and organizing it. It sounds like this would be one of those opportunities where they get something they could actually just jump into and get going with right away, much easier. Oh, I think it is. Uh, when I did this, when I organized this eyeglasses project, and I've had eyeglasses since I was in seventh grade, so it's, it's important to me. Um, I remember uh, there was the, the new president in Fillmore was looking for a international project to get involved in. And, and he just wanted to put money into it. They really didn't get involved in the planning, um, but, but it was meaningful to them to, to help with an international project, and they were able to. So, you know, that's one example. Um, other people are looking for, for feedback or uh, critique of something they're doing so they'll be more successful next time. Great. Uh, well, Max, thank you very much for all you do. And it's great having you back again. I guess the last one was on the Group Study Exchange. Uh, again, part of an international effort that you seem very involved with. So continue the good work. We definitely appreciate all you've done. It sounds like we touched on a little bit of passion talking about the, uh, the starfish. Um, and we look forward to seeing that steps happen. Well, thank you, Wade. And, yeah. and I hope Rotarians and other nonprofit interested people will come to the next uh, Poverty Conference at Cal Lutheran in Thousand Oaks on the 28th of January next year. Perfect. Sounds good. Well, with that, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. As you heard, uh, Steps is coming up. Uh, it's going to be a great event. I've been through every one of them, and every one of them I walk away with uh, some pretty satisfactory solutions, seeing all the good that we do. We will see you next time. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.